Good morning, Vikings fans. This is Morning Joe's. I am your host, Joe Johnson, <laughs> owner of PurplePTSD.com, which... It's like you don't want to be. Well, yeah. It's times like this where it, it really... Um, you kind of wonder, what are we doing as as people who cover this team religiously? But, silver lining, uh, we won't have to change Purple PTSD's domain name for at least another season. Or, depending on how, how long they keep Zimmer beyond this year, forever. Yee! Uh, wow. Like I said, I uh, own PurplePTSD.com, VikingsTerritory.com, and also the Purple Territory Radio Network. I am here with Mr. Optimism himself, Joe Oberly, who is the editor for th- those sites and also writes for the Sports Post. How you doing, man? I'm all right. I'm, uh, I wouldn't call myself an optimist, but I'm um, happy today since uh, I'm a year older today than I was last year at this time, so I have to be somewhat happy it's my birthday you know oh it's your birthday i thought you were just saying uh you're alive and i was like well that's a pretty low bar <laughs> no. uh well happy birthday man thanks what are you 26 yep no i'm i'm to the point where age is an accomplishment rather than uh, something to be feared so uh. yeah we had this conversation at the liquor store last night someone was saying it's a privilege age is a is a or, Living in old age is a privilege. Well, you start well. you start to feel good about you know your number rather than saying oh god, oh no, oh no. So that yeah, but that doesn't happen for a while. You got a little ways to go. You can fear you can fear forty coming around the bend, Joe. So yeah, bro. not looking forward to it. My yeah. looks my looks are all I got. So there you go. Uh, a quick disclaimer: you and I are diametrically opposed on the the issue that I will say uh, I was surprised by how many people that you know I, I know fans are reactive and, and I expected a lot of cousins bashing Zimmer Spielman bashing but there was a fair number of writers or people on the Vikings writer Twittosphere that were discussing the whole Zimmer Spielman thing and uh, I will I'll put the caveat out there that I didn't expect them to do it I didn't think they would um, my question was whether or not they should be uh, held accountable and I think uh, and we'll get into it um, but I think there's plenty of blame to go around um but i before that i wanted to just you know it's it's friday we didn't do a show er, earlier this week so we didn't have really a chance to talk about the bears game and so we don't really need to like analyze it like we typically do but i wanted to get your just like gut reaction to it as somebody that was there like what uh you just how it felt and and mm. and what it I mean obviously we know what it meant but it was just <sighs> you know we did a um before before I kick you the question we did a uh, non scientific poll and of our readers that happened to be around when I set the tweet out so we got about four uh, thirty people respond I was pretty sure they were gonna lose just because. That's what the Vikings do, and I've become more and more uh, just not aware of it, but I'm not surprised anymore, you know. So I I, I kind of put – I answered both ways, which is cheating, but I, I'm not surprised. You know, my initial reaction after the game, I did a video on Periscope. I uh, wasn't mad. I just said I was kind of sad. Uh, the next day, I was a little bit more angry, and I that was just because of some of the uh, debates that I was having with people and and uh, the logic therein. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't I wasn't surprised. Um, 
Nobody was. But would you be would be surprised. Yeah. Would be surprised that the Vikings would be. I mean, the Bears are a very good defense. They proved to them when they played them earlier in the season. The Vikings have gone through turmoil the whole season. They were. I, I said two weeks going in. You know, hey, slow your roll on these two wins. You know, wait till you see the Vikings offense and new offensive coordinator against a very, very good Bears defense. And that is what you saw. So that's not a surprise. What surprised me is the Vikings' defense against yeah. uh, Bears' offense. They should have, in their home stadium, uh, a sophomore quarterback, who obviously is is a decent quarterback getting better and starting to figure it out and, and not rattled at this point of the season. But the, – they should have performed better, but instead they let the Bears move right down the field, uh, opening drive, score seven points, put themselves in a hole that the offense couldn't dig out of. And then the, when they do start to chip away and get back into it, the, the defense responds with another terrible drive uh, against them and puts them further. You know, I mean, it almost solidifies the game and puts it out of reach because they're not going to score that many points against that Bears defense. So, that that to me was surprising. How yeah. the, the the defense just you know did not do what they needed. They had spurts, they had plays, but you know Trubisky who ran the ball and killed the Vikings the first game didn't didn't do it until late second half the game, like the second yeah. half, third quarter, and twice on a drive, which proved to be a killer. And it's almost like this guy is. You know, uh, doing sitting back there just dealing. You know, I don't have to run yet. Okay, I'll run now. You know, I mean, and it's like he's a he's a seasoned veteran, and how this defense made him that. It's still I'm scratching my head. And I'm sure Zimmer is. It, it was uh, yeah, it was uh, very because you've got the offense that uh, you knew was going to have trouble, and they sure as heck did. They had all kinds of trouble, but the defense should not have played that poorly against Trubisky. Yeah, you know, it's it's I said this perhaps in one of my videos, it's all a blur now, but that both after the game and during the the announcers were saying things that were just honestly embarrassing as as a Vikings fan, you know, Aikman was really increasingly critical of the Vikings defense, you know, saying things like Trubisky is a second-year quarterback. He's playing like it. You know, he, there was things in that game where, you know, he lost track of the play clock, for example. He said that should never happen. That's what quarterbacks look at. Um, you know, and, and having them say those sort of things, like, you know, what is this defense doing? Or, you know, there's zero excuse for a team with this much talent. That's what um, I think Howie Long said after the game to play that way they were all very surprised by it um you know i i i wonder since we're on the topic with the defense you know i know zimmer said this week that he had had some conversations during the season about uh the vibe that the vikings had a different vibe this year and he couldn't figure out what it was where it came from or how to fix it and that he, you know, had conversations with uh, players and, and coaches. And, you know, that's such a hard thing to quantify. But, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of one or two things that we could say categor categor categorically that aren't just vague concepts about how, why the defense struggled. You know, we keep they're, – they're historically good on third down – but in these big games, they've been non-existent. Um, you know that I think of some of those runs where where Barr was supposed to be spying um, Trub Trubisky. I'm um, thinking there was a long first down that he got where Barr was just completely MIA on that play. Um, those penalties. There were two penalties that very well could have shifted the momentum of this game, and they did in, in favor of the Bears. The Stephen Weatherly roughing the passer, which I know a lot of the people in the stadium didn't agree with, but it was, you know, definition textbook roughing the passer. And then I think it was uh, Curse got a defensive holding on a third and long, uh, which I, I give him uh, some sympathy for because obviously Holton Hill went down and so he had to fill in at nickel. 
but you know we talked a lot about the the Lions game and starting out <clears throat> you know with four three and outs and having 10 penalties and how you can't do that against the Bears and then they went out and did it so uh, that's a different topic but just from a defensive standpoint I mean what do you think happened in the Bears game what do you think uh, from a season as a whole where this defense was they were improving but again it seemed like in a lot of these big games against the top uh, competition in the <coughs> NFC they just didn't have it. Uh, you know, I, I guess I can't answer that, and I don't know that Zimmer can. I mean, like I said earlier, that they they struggled out of the gate because they complicated the scheme, and then they course corrected. And from that point on, I mean, they went from one of the worst defenses statistically after those first few games to uh, to become uh, top five, fourth perhaps. They were fourth, and, and the Bears were third going into that game. Um, so they played better, you know, they played like they, they should have, uh, Zimmer said yesterday they were still top something in, in third down on the season. So, okay. On the season. Uh, but it, like you just said, in important games, they, they, they weren't, um, I, I would have to say perhaps that, uh, Nagy, uh, having seen them once and, and beating them once knew, knew what to do. Matt Nagy, the coach of the bears and, uh, you know, I don't know if it was motivation, which a lot of people are pointing their finger at. If they're not up for for big games like this, I don't know how they couldn't be. Uh, yeah, I know that uh, that's part of the game, but at some point uh, you have to get around that. You have to uh, have a coach and a staff that knows how to motivate their players and knows how to get them ready and on point. Um, I, I don't know Bud if they Grant. were schemed. Pardon me. Wasn't that the knock against Bud Grant that he wasn't yes. good at getting people uh, up for big games? I don't know if they were out schemed and that Zimmer is you know wasn't prepared for what was coming at him. I haven't analyzed it to that extent, and I don't know. I mean, he's certainly not going to say that. It's uh, it's confusing. Uh, the Bears have a good team. They've got a good offensive line. The the they've got uh, they've got a, a good enough offensive line that I mean, Trubisky had a lot of time back there to do what he wanted. You know yeah. to. to just to make plays and to screw up. You know, I saw him throw some bad passes, and you're sitting there scratching your head. I said, how can they not get to this guy? When they did finally put pressure on him, he knows how to wiggle out. You know, there's he's got that that, that the Vikings quarterback doesn't. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to say. They, they probably missed Xavier Rhodes on uh, on that on that game. Yeah. Um, they probably missed Eric Kendricks. Uh, yeah. And, you know, so that's part of it. Uh, um, you know, and the, you, you add all that up and you got a team that is, they're playing against a team that is so confident that had not, you know, they had uh, very little to gain and, and uh, yet they, they had, they were confident because they, they didn't have to play with their backs against the walls like the Vikings did. And, and uh, that's exactly what happened. I mean, they, they they looked to be a very tough team going into the playoffs, especially for any games yeah. they had at home. And so, I, I mean, you, you got to look at all that. It, it sounds like I'm making excuses. I'm not. Yeah, and I don't think that, it sounds like that. I, I, I think a lot of people talk about, they point to this from Vikings roster, say there's so much talent there. How could they lose? Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you have to look at that. It, you know, yes, they've got, I think, uh, piece by piece, there's a lot of talent there, but boy, uh, Zimmer plays a, a team defense, and maybe when you get some players out of their out of their uh, lane or something, when when the pressure gets on, it, it starts to fall apart. And I think we've seen that in the past, and and maybe we saw that on Sunday. I don't know. It, it was it was pretty disappointing. I will say that I, I made this um, comparison during the live chat. And I said, to me, it feels like when Zimmer goes against a top-tiered offensive mind that he plays, his game plan is similar to how I play chess, which is I basically hunker down and wait to see what the other guys, how the other guy's going to attack me before doing anything. And I, I know that that's what every coach does, but I more mean that it, it feels like the Vikings on defense aren't very aggressive to start the game. They always seem to come out flat or with a bend-don't-break 
type yeah. thing, and that's then they tighten up. Um, it, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, and they, so, they don't blitz a lot early. Yeah, yeah, they definitely don't. And so I always, you know, I interpret that as him not wanting to do anything <clears throat> until he figures sees what the other team is going to do, and maybe from a uh, mindset standpoint, the the defense is is playing that way too. They're more back on their heels than than anything else. But you know, I. Uh, it's pretty. It seems like a pretty accurate and pretty conservative approach, of, you know, because that does kind of describe how they are. You don't see them, you know, coming out and making a defensive statement right away. I mean, yeah. sometimes they'll shut down the team on a drive right out of the gate, but uh, against those better teams, maybe not. You know, they they want to sit back and. I mean, all defense is response. That's that's basically what defense is. But there are times when you can be aggressive and take the yep. take the play to the offense, and they're probably not doing that. Yeah, you know, um, maybe things earlier in the season are just an example of how Zimmer does things too. Like, you know, uh, overthinking the Eagles game, overthinking the beginning of this season. Perhaps this, that's just how his brain works and he's overthinking things. Um, I don't know. It's just, it. you know, the main thing I said last week was that I didn't want to, you know, obviously I wanted the Vikings to win for a myriad of reasons, but I didn't want to have Vikings, our readers, or uh, us as, as writers or podcasters, arguing about why the team sucks and getting going through a whole off-season of that. I mean, it's going to come regardless, but, you know, there, oh, was, <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one part of the game that I thought was, you know, made big news, and I thought it was much... Uh, much ado about nothing, uh, which was the Cousins versus Thielen thing on the sideline. Somebody in my video on Monday said that it was inexcusable and deplorable the way that Cousins was talking to Thielen. And it was like, you know, I oh, this is the only time I've ever used this argument before, but it was, have you ever played sports? Like, on any level? Like, there's so much emotion and passion there. Then imagine being a professional, being like uh, Cousins, who is super meticulous. He's a perfectionist to a fault, perhaps. And and then you read what was on his lips, which was, I don't have 10 seconds, which I think summed up the entire season relatively well. Um, and, and I know they downplayed it afterwards, uh, but I wanted your take on that. Yeah, it was on... Uh KTOE this morning, uh, radio in Mankato. Mankato. Yeah, and uh, they were at, we were talking about that, and you know it's uh, as I said in my wrap up, I said they're going to both downplay it afterwards, which they did, and which you understand. And um, but you know you can't ignore that it happened, and it is something that happened because it, it it it's if if it, if it was normal, it would be happening more during the season. Uh, but what you had there is, I mean, I like what Pete Bursich said. He came out and I said, he goes, at least those two care. And there is some truth yeah. to that. Yeah. That doesn't excuse it, but that goes to what you were just saying. There's so much passion and, and they were against the wall. They saw the season crumbling down. They saw yeah. the, the inability to move the ball against this team and they didn't know what to do. And, and so then, then all of a sudden you start looking, you know, rather than inside yourself, you're looking outside yourself. I mean, uh, Thielen doesn't know what, uh, uh, Cousins is going through on a play-by-play basis. He's out there running his route trying to get open. He might, you know, I used to play a uh, receiver in, in high school, and I'd come back to the huddle every time I didn't get the pass and see. You know, I actually said, suck head, wide open. That was the phrase that my, my teammates <laughs> hit on me because they heard from me too often saying that, you know, and, and of course I wasn't, but that's what you feel like. And so I, I, I think that, that's what... Uh, you know, I, there's part of that with Thielen. You know, I mean, he, he figured, okay, I got open. I was open, you know. But, yeah. I mean, if, if you really watch the play, and you go back and look at the film, which he probably did on Monday, and said, okay, he's getting his face about to get rammed in as I'm still making my cut or whatever and yeah. trying to extricate myself. So you, you're right. The passion is there. The emotion is there. And in this situation, it was uh, as as heightened as it could be. You know, Cousins got a. Uh, he, he might have a nice uh, 
fat wallet, but he's got a huge monkey on his back with the term yeah. with eight four million. Yeah. And if you don't think he's feeling any pressure or culpability for that, that you're wrong. He does. And he wants to win. They all want to win. I mean, there's nobody more competitive than Thielen out there. <clears throat> so but by the same token, I said, you know what? Maybe that it's possible. Is that a crack in the veneer? Who knows? But I, I don't think so. I think I think it's two people that don't know each other completely yet, and and it's maybe good that they saw themselves on this level. Uh, okay, this is what it means to you. This is what's going on. You now can understand what I'm going through. I mean, he's he's speaking the truth. I don't have ten seconds for you to to make every cut of your route tree to, yeah. to, to finally get open. I, you know, and so. If I don't think Thielen's crabbing at him to get the ball to him because I, I need, you know, to get this incentive or I need to, you know, reach this milestone or blah, 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 blah. He wants to win. They both want to win. And, and um, uh, you got to, you know, it, it starts with the offensive line. Zim, you know, everybody knows it. It, does, it doesn't do anybody any good to, to throw them further under the bus than they already are. And so what you hope they don't start doing is looking at each other, yeah. you know, for for reasons to 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 complain and then and then make these cracks in the veneer fissures that ex- suddenly are uh, you know breaking down the whole offense. So I, I think you know another year they get together, they get to know each other more. Everybody does on the offense. You get a line in there, it it, it hopefully will improve. But it's much about do about nothing. I wouldn't go that far, but I, I lean more towards that, Joe. Than yeah, to, you're right. I mean, uh... the, the, no, no, I'm just saying I'm leaning no. more. To- you, I, I'm leaning more towards you than the other way that this is a huge problem. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're right. I mean, I was I was kind of more referencing like the deplorable nature of it. You know, yeah, stuff like strong. that happens. But that's a little strong. That stuff doesn't happen when a team is winning, when things are running well, unless you have a complete like Keyshawn Johnson situation on your hands. Um, there, there's video of, of Tom Brady out there screaming at at uh, teammates too. So yeah. Uh, that's true. Uh, well, speaking of a perfectionist, um, but it, it did. You could you could see their pan, not pan. Well, maybe panic, but things just weren't working. And it, at that point, you, you kind of felt for both of them because it's not something that clearly was going to be fixed. It's it was a season long thing. You know, I, I said in one of my videos um, too that. Yeah, all season we were waiting for the other sh- the not the other shooter drop but for everything to come together and outside of that dolphins game there wasn't really a time where you felt like the offense the defense and special teams were all playing well at the same time um yeah didn't happen yeah yeah you know i i feel like I'm just as guilty as everybody else in saying that, well, they're going to get it together for the Bears because if they don't, ugh, they have, you know, they're going to come out firing and the, they're not going to come out. Uh, as, you know, a lot of that is, is on defense you could feel it. Like they just didn't feel up like you would expect. I think Zimmer said something uh, in when he was talking about the vibe. I forget the phrase he used, but it was kind of like a – um, killer mentality or closing nastiness, out games, nastiness. Nas- nastiness that they didn't have that this year, right. and and you know that's a uh, we've kind of already touched on that, but it's just I, I don't know why I thought that they would suddenly get it together in week seventeen. Um, touching a lot, on a lot of people did, a lot of people did because it, 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 motivation is such a huge thing in this league, and and you know like you know like everybody said as soon as. The Rams get up. All of a sudden, the motivation starts to leak away for the Bears a little bit. But uh, uh, you know, you, you, there, there's the difference in the team. There's a, the, the Bears are ascending, and everything is exciting. And they're they're like the Vikings last year, who every win built upon itself. And okay, we're good. We're getting better. We're good, you know, whereas the Vikings are coming off that peak, and they lose a head coach, and you know, all of a sudden they're 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 down, and and they lose to the Bills, and they. They tie the Packers and have these things that their their season is is going in the other direction mentally, emotionally. You know, so you should have it should have been that the Vikings were uh, had everything to play for, but they, they're playing desperate. They had to win to get in, whereas the Bears, yeah, the Bears are just sitting pretty, and it's, it doesn't matter. You know, if we don't, you know, we should go out there and try to beat you guys because we don't want to play you next week. But if we do, we're going to beat you in 
in Chicago. So what the hell? You know, they knew exactly, you know, they – I feel like confidence is such a huge thing in, in this league and in any sports and, and, and a mentality. And the mentality for the Vikings was clearly wrong because they did not play like a, a team that uh, – uh, they did not play well. Their, their no. mentality was not well going into this game for some reason. And, you know, there's so many question marks. They had just gotten rid of their offensive coordinator previously, two games previously. Maybe, you know, as soon as the Bears move down on their Vikings decent defense, oh, my God, then you start thinking the other way. And, and four, four three and outs to start the game, that's, yeah. not, uh, that's not something to instill your confidence. So I don't and know. They, they couldn't pick up a first down against the Bears' backup defense. It was just a, what? In, this is so bad. Um, yeah. And and I, I put in the agenda whether or not – the way that these uh, the Lions and Bears games went, whether or not D. Filippo has been uh, validated in any way, um, I'm sure he feels better than he did after the the Dolphins game for sure, or maybe his yeah. job prospects picked up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean both those games, four three and outs, just you know. It, this kind of ties into the Cousins as a bust thing. I felt like there's two schools of thought in regards to the blame. It was the coaches or Spielman, um, or Zimmer and Spielman, rather, and then uh, Cousins. And I, I totally understand that I come off as a Cousins apologist because I was a huge proponent of him coming here. But the debate Luke and I had that I got relatively worked up during um, happened before the draft, and I had the assumption that they would, sh- if they're going to put that much money into a quarterback, that they would protect him. And a lot of people, the one argument that I uh, keep making or having to make when people are, are, are talking about uh, Case Keenum is that Keenum had a different offensive line in front of him up until the playoffs. He had Joe Berger, he had Nick Easton, he had Remmers not playing as a guard, but as a tackle, which is what they brought him in to do. Um, and the and he line... Had a healthier uh, uh, Pat Elf line, too. Yeah, uh, totally. And and was in, you know, healthy and in shape. You know, Elf line took a while to get going. Um, I know Reef was banged up this year, too. And so, I mean, even with that line, um, Keenum had some miraculous... Uh, evading pressure maneuvers. He was still pressured on a fair number. I think like 45% of his dropbacks or something like that. I remember Luke saying something about that last year. Like uh, Keenum has made this line look a lot better than they are just because he's evaded so much pressure. Um, But the team knew what Cousins was when they brought him in. They knew that he was one of the least mobile quarterbacks in the league. They knew that he struggled, went under duress, and you know he, he started the season out really strong, and he was taking a lot of shots in the pocket, and eventually that caught up to him. Um, but I just really quickly, uh, the first point was about De Filippo okay. and Stefanski, and then we could talk about Cousins too. Oh, so you're throwing it to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, just make something uh, there that uh, uh, he's he's somewhat vindicated. Of course he is, because they didn't all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, go gangbusters. Yeah, and they certainly didn't beat a good team with that offense. Um, you know, they, they tried to run the ball against the Bears, and it was to, to no avail. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't think that uh, throwing the ball – uh, against this Bears team would have been any better, you know. Per De Filippo, he had his chance to do so; it wasn't successful, and and they are a, a good defense secondary, so it, it, it wouldn't have mattered, you know, in that regard. Um, I, I think I, I don't have any. Uh, that being said, I don't have any problems with them getting rid of De Filippo because uh, if your head coach tells you to run the ball more and, and you yeah. just c- continually don't, then there's I mean there's more. There's more problems there than just you know, well, whatever we've heard about you know, and and after we saw that Sports Illustrated article come out, that those problems started early in the season. 
And yeah. we didn't hear about it until Zimmer finally, you know, opened up about it in the press. Uh, re- really quickly, that was uh, your. That, I completely agree with you. Even if they couldn't run the ball, and it was to a detriment, and you, so on and so forth, he should have done it either to prove yeah. a point or just to listen, exactly. right or wrong, you know. I, I guess at least in one of those games, you know, I mean, at, at some point you just say, okay, my, this is what my boss wants me to do. I'm going to do it. And if it's right or wrong, and we go evaluate from there, I mean, I, I would think, but whatever. So, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I, do I, uh, to a certain degree, uh, wish it had worked out better between the two? Yeah, because perhaps this guy is 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 a decent head coach, but clearly they're you know they're not on the same page. They don't have a didn't have a relationship coming in. It was kind of a forced marriage, and the marriage yeah. didn't. So, so, so there you go. Um, as far as cousins. Uh, yeah, you know, you you make a good point about uh, had a little bit better defensive line for Keenum than than they had for 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 Cousins this year. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I think uh, Keenum got pretty lucky last year. You know, everything everything worked in his favor. I mean, granted, he he's better escaping the pocket, better throwing on the run, better you know when a play breaks down and, and getting some yards with his legs. There's and and it, and it worked out, you know, and it gave the defenses something else to think about. But they don't have to think about that with Kirk Cousins. You know, they just hit him as he's trying to scramble through and make him fumble. So um, they've got to protect him better next year. It, it, it you have to you have to work with the kind of uh, personnel you have, and like you said, this is who he is. So, you know, get that figured out now. Did you know? Did they know that uh, Eason was going to get a second opinion and and be done for the season? No. Did they know that Elfline would come back so late from those two injuries? Late, in, nobody knows that. Uh, uh, did they know that? Uh, you know. I, you, you, you don't know any of that, and I, I think those are some of the biggest problems. You, they did know that they, they probably didn't think that uh, Compton was going to be your your starter the whole year. He was going to be he was going to be a backup, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, they should have protected him more since he is such a, a thing that I think they tried, but it it, it didn't work out. But they got to try harder this this year going forward. So you got you, this, this is your guy. Cousins is your guy for, yeah. for better or for worse. And it, it's really counterproductive at this point to even talk about Keenum. He's not coming back and the Vikings are not, you know, they're not, they're not going to give up on cousins. You know, Zimmer said in his press conference yesterday that uh, he, he likes uh, the way he played. You know, there's some things that can, he alluded to, there's some things that can improve on. He said, he'll talk to cousins about that, but he's not going to tell us what that is. So, you know, he's the guy. So, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter how good or bad or ill Kim is. I guess I wouldn't even engage in that discussion anymore because it's moot at this point. Totally. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, you, you still want Keenum back? I don't. I, no, I don't. no. I am. Um, I mean, I. I think that. Um, I mean, unfortunately, just that this is how the season ended, and that we're having these conversations. Um, oh God, it just sucks. Uh, it's so bad. Moving on, Joe. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Come on. Uh, well, let's get Come into on. a, 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 a rosier topic. The whole. Zimmer Spielman thing. Um, so I'll here's I'll, I'll just put my rationale into it, or what I think about it, and then uh, you can respond. But and I've read your your piece, and I'm I'm working on a response that I keep having to edit down because it's like seven thousand words. But uh, oh my. Yeah, I was hoping to see it before the show because then I could point by point go after you. But uh, uh, anyway, go ahead. So, I feel like the offensive line is on both of them. Um, Spielman has neglected the line since before Zimmer got it. Excuse me. Um, from I, I think he felt burned by the Khalil pick in 2012, and then it was four or five years until they spent a pick above the fourth round for a offensive lineman. Um, you can point to the line clearly two years ago. The Vikings started off five and zero, and they had a bunch of journeymen with injury histories that were over thirty come in, and then they all got injured. And everyone said, "Well, that's just bad luck." Well, not really. I mean, that's what those guys were known for. That's why they were available. That's why they were cheap. Um, 
And it's been proven time and time again. I mean, the Compton thing, any of it is is that you're going to have injuries on the offensive line and you need depth and you're not going to get by with patchwork guys in this league. Um, and I feel like, you know, the, that lack of depth hurt them against, you know, they had to reshuffle the offensive line during the bye week of the playoffs last year. And, you know, then they go into Philadelphia, they score on the first drive, and then they have two turnovers because the offensive line collapsed because the, the guys have been playing together for a week and a half uh, in that configuration. Uh, Zimmer clearly uh, cannot take his eyes off the shiny new toy, which is typically a defensive player, typically a, de- uh, a corner you got three guys from the first round, another guy from the second round. Um, they needed that depth this year, but, you know, you got Holton Hill, an undrafted free agent, that I think with this defense being a team defense, you can put in – that's been kind of my argument with the Anthony Barr thing is you can put somebody in and as a whole the, the numbers aren't that much worse because it's a team thing. Um, beyond that – you know, uh, a lot of people are saying, well, don't. why would you blow it up now? Don't blow everything up. I don't agree that getting a new head coach is is blowing things up. You're not, you know, I know Zimmer's fingerprints are all over this defense, especially, and it's perfect for his, his system, but this is as far as it's gotten us. You know, I know you said that he deserves credit if he deserves blame. Credit for last year, blame for this year. Uh, I agree with that, but I also think that the standards are different now uh, from an ownership perspective, but just in general. They have a new stadium. They just doled out the biggest contract in NFL history at the time. You know, it's it's Super Bowl or bust, and while, whether or not that's fair is a different discussion. And, you know, outside of these guys like McVay and Nagy, you know, uh, the Vikings brought in arguably – one of the most coveted and looked up to offensive minds, young offensive minds with this movement towards young, you know, coordinators and head coaches in Filippo, that didn't work. Um, and so my point mainly is that, you know, I feel like this defense, as we talked about today, is is not going to win this team a championship by itself. Um, Came down close last week. Yeah, but then they got shellacked. You know, I feel like they don't show up for big games. Uh, as we discussed earlier, I feel like there's a. I think Zimmer gets out schemed um, by these quote unquote offensive gurus, and so my rationale is is that you need a, an elite offense to do that. Now, whether or not. They're capable of doing that by getting some linemen next year. I'm sure they are, but I don't know how many coordinators would want to come here seeing what happened with DeFilippo. Um, and even North Turner, when they're, you know, I, but I do feel like uh, North the Vikings. on him. Yeah. Is that a- North Turner's on, not on Zimmer, but go ahead. No, I don't think it is either, but I think they might look at that. Um, but I, 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 I do think that from a head coaching opportunity perspective, the Vikings would be the number one team for sure. You know, uh, they just have so much talent. And so I don't think it's blowing it up. I think that the defense will be good to great with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, bringing somebody else in, but that the, the offense needs to get elevated. Um, and that, so who that, do you want? Who, who, you, that's who, you, who, who are you going to replace him with? I mean, uh, D, give D, me a name. D. Filippo. <laughs> Mike McCarthy. Um, somebody said, I'm like, oh. God, no. Um, I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked at. Uh, that's the reality of it, though. Thing. I mean, do you, do you have somebody out there that just is screaming like, you know, uh, that, that's going to come in here and, and fix all these ills? You know, I, I I am not a huge proponent of, of kicking people down the curb. You know, uh, I, I've always been that. I don't sit there and call for people's heads. You know, I, I try to understand the situation and benefit the doubt and emotion rather than emotionally say when they lose, 
that oh my oh my god they're terrible they got to go and and that that's what I think a lot of what's going on here I think that would be the easy emotional response to do is to fire Zimmer fire Spielman and start over I'm sorry that w- it would be starting over because this is Zimmer's defense if Zimmer's not running it then then you don't know what you got I mean then then you got player who knows if the next guy that's going to run that defense is 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 got the right personnel for what he wants to do. You don't. You have to start retooling there. Um, I, I think you're closer to to uh, 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 getting better and getting back to where you were uh, than 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 you are uh, to to blowing it up. I mean, I, I think the Vikings overachieved last year, but certainly underachieved this year. I think they're a playoff team that, you know, as the roster sits right now, a playoff team that you know with with some tweaks and, and some changes, more than tweaks and changes can, can, can go forward again. And I think it starts with Zimmer. I mean, everybody talks about Zimmer and it's sometimes, it really does kind of seem like it is his, uh, this is his, his play thing where he gets to go out and, and find the best defensive players to, to, to really make that defense great. And cause he, they, a lot of the first round draft choices have been on that, but let's not forget uh, Laquan Treadwell, you know, at the the Vikings made that choice because everybody and their brother's dog was screaming for a, a wide receiver that year, and they, they shouldn't have done it. They should not have made that pick. It was a bad pick because they did it because all the other picks went away. You know, all the other uh, uh, receivers and uh, went away, and and they were left with him. And they figured they had to get somebody before him. Well, they shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. They probably should have drafted a defensive guy, or or well, they should have drafted a lineman. But that's yeah, beside the point. Um, well, I think I, real quick, I think the, the the Treadwell thing also was a lack of knowing what you got. You know, they they should have been able to, in some capacity, said you know see that. And granted, he was improving year to year, but that they were okay with Diggs and Thielen, and then gone for alignment. But the the difference is is that there is no Diggs and Thielen on this offensive line to fall back to. I mean, they're just they're in desperate need of depth there. Um, no, well, that's, that just proves what a crapshoot it is. Diggs is Diggs is a fifth rounder, and, and Thielen was undrafted. So, I, I mean, but you're not gonna you're not gonna get any roles if you don't pick a player. You're not gonna get any what? Well, if it, if it's a crapshoot, and you're that doesn't mean not to draft players at all at the position. Which well, I'm not is, saying. That. Yeah, I know, but I, if it's a if it's a crapshoot, it is a crapshoot. Oh it God, is, but crap. they but if they're not picking players, they don't give themselves that opportunity. You don't think they're picking players? I mean, who, who's who's not a player? What do you mean that like they're not good players? On, or... No, often on the offensive line, they didn't pick anyone before the fourth round for half a decade. No, yes, yeah, you're right, and you know why? It's because Zimmer came in, and, and the defense when Zimmer came in had just put up the worst statistical year in the history of the Vikings. Which you know the Vikings have had a defense, a good defense, you know, throughout their history. So he had to rebuild that defense first. And now, once you build it to a certain level, you 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 do continue to to uh, bring in uh, newer and younger players because your your defense gets older. So um, has more emphasis been put on the defense yet? And does it need to change the offense? Correct, absolutely. But I, I, I don't fault him for, for, for building that defense. He took a team that was, uh, I can't remember what they were, like 7-9 to nine or something when, when he, he came here, and he, and he took him to the NFC Championship in four years. Now, granted, like I said, they overachieved, but I, I, you, you, can't, you can't just negate all that because they lost to the flipping Bears and didn't make the playoffs. I mean, would you be saying, you know, this, uh, you know, if 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 they won, you know, would you would you be saying fire Zimmer if they won? Well, you, you can't do that because uh, you, you probably would be saying it again on Monday morning, or a lot of people would because you know they're gonna, they're gonna lose. They would have lost to the Bears this weekend in, in Soldier Field, in my estimation. No, but, I uh, mean, of course, if they had won, I wouldn't say it, but they didn't. Why not then? Why not? I mean, you're you're judging them on one game then. No, it's it, not really. Not the way that they lost that game. I'm that, still judging him on one game. No, I, I, because I, I, I'm not though. Because it, that game was the biggest game of the year, and it it was an awful lot like the Eagles game to me, or the second half of the Saints game, and it's uh, or any of these other games this season against teams that with winning records that they 
we kept saying is a playoff game. Um, the the defense isn't good enough to do the things that arguably they should be doing, considering what we just said, which is so it's so it's, not, it's not personnel. It's it's the the, the, the scheme and the. I, mean, uh, well, I think it's the scheme. Uh, I don't think. I mean, I, I hope it's not personnel. Um, I don't think one of my biggest arguments for bringing in Cousins last year is I thought this team needed a new leader because I felt like they just didn't have it in those big games, and you know clearly that didn't end up working. But this idea of having a super great defense with uh, you know, uh, some wh- who was it that uh, when Cousins came in, you know, it was I forget who it was on the team was saying, you know, well, well we know what we got with with Kirk and you know people are saying, well, they'll go thirteen and three with this defense and this he, all he needs to do is put up twenty one points. Um, they're good to great in games that aren't uh, super important and. I don't know enough about football to say whether it's a scheme thing, whether these guys just get too tight in these big games, whether Zimmer does, whether it's a combination of personnel or scheme. But I feel like he's been out schemed. You know, when 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 other teams make adjustments, it doesn't feel like the Vikings make similar adjustments. I would conjecture that they're they're not in game. I would I would conjecture that. they weren't good to great, good to great in the Buffalo game, which was a <laughs> pretty unimportant game, which became important. They're all they're all important, you know. And uh, as we've seen, because you know, ma- make a field goal, Daniel Carlson, and the Vikings in the playoffs. Pull your head out of your tailpipe, the entire Vikings team against Buffalo, and they're in the playoffs. You know, uh, do one make one more play against the Rams, they're in the playoffs. Yeah. So I mean, to me, they're all important. But yes, I get your point. They seem to they seem to look. They fall flat on their face against in really big situations. Well, you know that's the history of the Vikings. At least I don't know why though. Like I don't, either. I don't know either. And I, I, I uh, it's different uh, people, different eras, and it's always the same result. And it drives me crazy. You know, I know Chad Greenway when he was on the show, he said something that the players uh, that I never heard from a player, which was, you know, going into Chicago, we know we're gonna fuck it up. Uh, in the back of our minds, you know, and maybe that carries on from from generation to ger- generation a little bit. But I mean, damn, the Eagles won. I was just watching Silver Linings uh, playbook, which is my. Have you seen that? Yes, it's fiction. It's 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 fiction. But go it's, ahead. It's my autobiography. <laughs> um, almost to a T, except for my dad isn't that OCD. Um, <laughs> but God, it is though. My mom. Don't don't get mad. I got food coming. It's always the same thing. Um, but that movie is is you know about just how the Eagles are are some, not really, but you know they're cursed or they never win or whatever. The Deshaun Jackson spiking it thing, <laughs> and they won it. So why can't we? You know, it's so, just, so you're thinking that if the Vikings would have moved to L.A., they'd be in be uh, have a couple Super Bowls by now. You know what sucks is that probably would have happened. Um, <laughs> like the Dallas Stars or... The, granted, the Minneapolis Lakers were, were a great team, as you know, as uh, writing it. about them. I, it's, I don't know. I, 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 all I can say is if you get a new coach, then you... You are uh, you're going to be in last place next year. You might build up in a couple of years back up, but it, it is to a certain degree starting over. You can't just bring in a new head coach and to just he's going to tweak or do whatever and uh, uh, make this team gangbusters next year. I just don't see that happening. Maybe that does happen other places. I, I don't see it happening here. I see uh, maybe there aren't good leaders here that really know how to to inspire each other, you know, maybe, maybe what we saw on the sidelines on Sunday is, is the beginning of somebody trying to do that. You know, that really gets pissed off that, you know, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to say. I, I, I just think it, uh, uh, you bring in a new regime now and you're going to take, you're going to go backwards for a while again before you go forward. But, you know, that, that maybe maybe if you, you know, they do have some offensive talent, but uh, they aren't going any, you know, they, they could come in and, and score some points, but they're not going to do it until they 
fix the offensive line, and I don't think Zimmer's standing in the way. If he does Not this anymore. year, if he does this year, yeah, and, and then then. I'm having I'm I'm moving towards your side of the conversation next year. Then then I then I'm off the the Zimmer bandwagon because it it, it is plain as, you know there are other problems with this team, but it's plain as the nose in your face that the the offensive line has to improve for this team to to, to do anything better because you know the defense is bad had had struggles, but part of that's on the offense too because they got them on the field all the time. How many games in the last five did we have? You know we start out Owen three and out for you know three or four uh different series i mean that that wears on a defense you know definitely um anyway. that might be the silver lining of khalil mack going to chicago is you know similar to like uh with aaron Rodgers and matthew stafford and needing to get corners uh, and, and, and they're the gonna packers, get and the packers have to get, the packers having to get defensive backs because granny moss was on the team yeah yeah you know so hopefully that's the case. I can't. I mean, they, they don't really have that many holes elsewhere. Uh, were you surprised that Stefanski uh, interviewed for the Browns job? I know he's clearly one of the longest tenured assistant coaches in the league, and like you said, you know the team is no, is, not, uh, at not at all, not not at all. I think uh, uh, leverage for him. I mean, you know. Yeah. If some- you know, starters A, B. They they didn't allow him to interview elsewhere last year. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot C, about that. C, uh, Zimmer and offensive coordinators, <laughs> they don't have the best track record. So no, I'm not surprised at all. He, he his agent and it is probably said to him, "You're a dummy if you don't." And he he's a smart enough dude that he knows that too. You've got to, you know, get some leverage and get him. You know, it, we have no idea, but. Well, boy, it's scaring the heck out of me, and I'm not yeah. sure. I said on the radio this morning, there is hue and cry out there for Hugh Jackson all of a sudden, and I meant the pun, you know, because they're talking about Hugh and people are crying, and and I don't know yeah. enough about him as an offensive coordinator. Okay. Uh, I certainly, I certainly know about him as a as a, uh, a head coach, and and I'm not impressed. So, <laughs> and he got another interview, and I have to this. Is, I don't want this to get taken out of context, but I wonder if that's I forget what the rule is named after, but that you have to interview a, a black coach. Oh yeah, it's the guy from uh, it's Pittsburgh Steelers guy rule. It's the Rooney rule. Art Rooney Kirk. rule. That's right. Um, you know because yeah, was he got three wins? Um, yeah, I was hoping maybe you you had uh, known a little bit more about his offensive bona fides or lack thereof because. Uh, people seem apoplectic about that potential move, and, and they're they're looking at it from the same spectrum that I just did. You know, they're looking at three and thirty-one or something as the head head coach of the of the uh, Browns, and I guess he was with Zimmer in Atlanta for a year. Okay, so they know each other, and then Zimmer was asked that yesterday in the in the press conference about is are you gonna. Uh, talk to people that you have worked with before is that what and, and he says well that's not a good question because that's a good question but he says i think you're fishing in the wrong pond so he's you know goes i know where you're going with this and i think it is about hugh jackson so uh i he, he's already trying to poo poo that but boy there's there's some steam out there that it, it is uh it is uh it's a, a strong possibility yeah that and, was and, the headline you know I, I just i would love to know straight out but we're not going to is is Stefanski not the guy? Did you see something in three games that that really said he's not? And go ahead elsewhere or what? I you know I don't know. It, it's such a. Uh, I, mean, I mean, if every move you make is so scrutinized, it's it's hard to operate as a as a head. That coach. would not be good. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's get into the uh, five furious facts cap space. Discussion right. because apparently um, they the the cap's going up by twenty million next year as opposed to yeah. the typical ten so that's good yeah, yeah I, I uh, uh I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to look forward Joe I, it, it's well, a long it's like a long time since Sunday already so I, I I'm trying to look forward and like you know so here we go the two hundred two thousand nineteen <laughs> NFL cap, salary cap is projected between one hundred eighty seven and one hundred ninety one million the Vikings have 
uh, team cap space of 11.3 right now. Mm. So that's what they have to deal with. It doesn't sound like much, but they're going to have to do some restructuring because we all know of the people that are coming up. Fact number two, Kirk Cousins has a – and I just put this out because I was looking it up things and it just blew me away. Cousins has a cap hit of 29 million next season, which comprises 15.26% of the cap. Ouch! The next highest is the Neil Hunter, who comprises 7.10 million. So it's less than half. And there should be – so I'm saying there should be a knock on Cousins' uh, agent's door, you know, for, for restructuring. I, I don't know the rules there, but I would think you could – you'd have to probably extend him yeah. uh, to to in order to get uh, – you know, he's probably never going to go away from the guaranteed money, but in order to uh, – to, to get some some space, or you'd have to extend him another year. And, but uh, for those considering cutting Kirk Cousins, uh, then there's this little bit out of a guaranteed contract and sixty million of dead cap money. Oh. <laughs> I, saw that, I just said, oh my god! So Kirk Kirk is going nowhere fast. Uh, next one is Everson Griffin has a cap hit of almost twelve million, eleven point nine. And he's the fifth highest. Some say he is primed for restructuring. I don't yeah. necessarily agree. I, I, I think he'll earn his money next year. And I'd, I'd like to hear your response to this because a lot of people are talking, oh, they got a restructuring based on what his what he did this year. Yeah. And I think he's 30 years old, and we know what he went through. And I think, you know, he's he's back and he's going to turn around. He's just like – and he lost, you know, f- he was away from football for five games, I believe, and that's – Five, five or six weeks in this league is is a long time. So when I is think, his contract up? Uh, he, he's under contract next year. He'll uh, he's got a lot. I don't know when he is up. I guess I could look real quick. But it, uh, do you think? Uh, I mean, what's your thoughts? No, so, I don't think they would do that. Um, hopefully, from a P. I mean, just from a PR standpoint, that wouldn't look too great. But I mean, this guy. Is is one season removed from back to back seasons where he was on track to, you know, maybe break the single season sack record, and we all know what he went through this year, um, and so I have, I mean, he's still on his prime. I have no doubt that he'll be back next year, and while it'd be nice to get some extra money, uh, I don't see them doing that. He's 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 a leader on the defense. He's amazing when he's playing at full capacity and hopefully you know now that he's got this extra time off compared to last year uh he'll be able to kind of shore up his his mental health stuff because that can come back over and over and over again but yeah i don't see that happening you asked a good question though what once is up and oh my goodness he's got he's not a free agent until 2023 so he's got after yeah he's got three more years so maybe Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe he is uh, a due for some restructuring because yeah. you know he's going to be 33 by the time he's he's a free agent. So yeah, maybe that's a you know based on what he you know you can't hang. I I wouldn't want to hang everything that happened this year on him and say he's he's done because he is such a hard worker and he's diligent and he is a leader on the team and and uh, many other things. So, uh, but you know that that may be that may be one that's if uh, not this year next year. Or yeah. it's going to eventually happen. I mean, right. depending on if it's backloaded or not. But yeah, definitely. Another name they're talking about is Riley Reef. He's next yeah. after Griffin with eleven point seven million. Uh, some speculate he's a candidate. Uh, uh, and they talk about things like moving Brian Neal over and cutting Reef. I, I don't agree. What do you say? No. Um, he struggled this year. Uh, there are a couple thoughts on that, really quickly. I like O'Neal on the right side. I don't want to flip him completely over. Um, and it's I forget who they made this move with. Was it last year? But it felt like once they got a little bit of depth, they cut somebody. And I don't remember who. Maybe it was Boone, um, which is a completely different situation. But uh, they need to add depth, and and the, they don't need to get rid of their left tackle. Uh, and what bring in... Somebody that'll cost just as much, if not more, or draft somebody, and like you said, that's a crapshoot. So, I say stick with them. Maybe put someone next to him who isn't god awful. <laughs> uh, this argument, everyone's saying how bad Elfline is, and granted, he was hurt and out of shape, but he's got two black holes next to him. You know, it's it's not the easiest thing in the world when that happens. 
I had one more I didn't uh, send over to you that I just threw on here just for the fun of it because, you know, it is the five furious facts of Friday through blah, 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 blah. Uh, Laquan Treadwell is due three million, three point one million next year. And that yeah. and that is his dead cap number. So I'll just oh, leave that. That's what it. I was gonna ask, what is his dead cap money? Yep. Uh, so, so he'll it, be around maybe. Sure. I, I don't think he will, but uh, you know, maybe they'll try to trade him or, or something. But uh, I've been but, seeing a lot of people saying uh, Larry Fitzgerald is gonna end up here next year. Oh god, they've been saying that for the last five six, <laughs> my entire six. life, basically. Yeah. Um, you never, uh, it would be really cool if it did. Um, He'll come back here as a wide receivers coach, maybe, but that's about it. Uh, I I, uh, I think he wants to finish his career in one spot because I, I saw recently where he was pretty proud of the fact that he has spent his entire career with one team. So I don't think it's happening, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. There's your five furious facts, Joe. Awesome. What, so we're going to have a lot of uh, great off-season coverage. If you want to, uh, people want to check out both PurplePTSD.com and Vikings Territory, there's a ton of articles already. Uh, we added about 15 new writers uh, last week, uh, and uh, I think three or yeah, four of them. They're starting to push my stuff off the front page. I don't like it. No, I'm just I know, kidding. Well, this is what's, uh, <laughs> we're lucky because a good – this happens sometimes, um, more often than maybe it should, but people go through all the steps to get signed up, uh, everything, and then they never do a single thing. And that has happened multiple times with this new batch of writers, and I think it's uh, they expected to be writing about the playoffs, and they're either too depressed. I, I thought maybe it was just the holidays, but it's been too long. So... Oh, I, I mean, can't I, say I, I fault them, but people panic about off season. I don't. There's nothing to write about. There is so much to write about. I mean, oh, there's, only, there's only like a two or week, two or three week period between the draft and OTAs where it's just dead. Um, but the, the NFL is a year round thing now, and and it's so sometimes all the time. I mean, you go 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 to go to get the transcript of Zimmer's last press conference. Yeah. And, and you know, pick at one or two quotes, and you got something to go off. It, it, it's amazing that the things that are happening out there. And and you know, I was looking this morning before we came on the air here, Joe, and there's a bunch of new stories up there, which is great to see. So there's there's some good content up there. So yeah. Go, go and take a look at it. Definitely digging. Uh, Connor Wickland, uh, Kirby O'Connor. Uh, Vincent Larson, Shannon King. There's, uh, we got some really, really great stuff. So definitely keep an eye on that. Um, well, there's going to be a lot of changes this off season. I'm hopefully going to be able to completely overall purple PTSD aesthetically. I'm still working on building a purple territory radio website and getting a new platform that allows for individual show downloads as opposed to. I, I feel bad for people, and we're aware of this. But you know, when you sign up on iTunes, you get tw- you know 13 shows. I got a text yesterday. Why is why is Morning Joe's in Spanish? Um, you know, it's it's we're hopefully gonna be able to to change it because that you know we can't grow if if people's phones are being completely inundated with every show under the under the sun. So we'll have that. A lot of Periscope stuff. Um, but wanted to thank everybody and, and you especially, Joe, for a great 2018, great in terms of being able to work together. It wasn't horrible, but, you know, I feel okay. You know, I am not as but be- My dad is right, and, and you are too. It, it actually seems to get better, either with age or the fact that I look at things from a distance because I, I, I look at it as a job, so it... Take some of the passion out of it because we I, also you know, can't do anything about it. If yeah. you think listening to us, you then you are crazy. <laughs> Pretty sure Zimmer is in our message board. It could be selling prescriptions. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this has been Morning Joe's. Uh, I have some errands around this morning, so we won't be doing a post-show Q and A. I might hop on Periscope a little later. Uh, but we'll. Figure out the off-season schedule um, with the playoffs and stuff. I'm sure, and all of this end of the season stuff. I'm sure we can go 
once a week. Uh, after that, we might go once every two weeks like we did with Purple Journal. But we'll figure it out and we'll let everybody know. Chiefs uh, versus Saints in the in the Super Bowl. I'm ah, hoping, for, hoping for a Chiefs victory. That's, uh, that's it. I, I went with Chiefs. What I want is Chiefs-Rams. What I think might happen is Saints-Patriots, which is uh, nobody wants that. But we will find out. Some good games this weekend. Uh, but this has been Morning Joe's. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks for the support this season, and we'll be back next week. Skull.